Bad news for Mr. Beast Burger, but if I'm going to be completely honest, uh, I think Mr. Beast is going to be all right whether the burger company flops or not, really. Well, let's see what the drama's about. There's new to crap. Different channel this time now. Mr. Beast is suing his own brand, M Mr. Beast Burger, basically. He's not suing Seems the exact reasonable. thing, Mr. Beast Burger. He's suing the company that has taken care of Mr. Beast Burger, a company called Virtual Dining Concepts. So this company is a ghost one. kitchen service. Fucking ghost kitchens. First of all, on that one, I don't think there was any, like, confusion or people thought that Mr. Beast was running all of the Mr. Beast Burgers or the company in any way, right? I think that makes sense. I think that Mr. Beast started a company and then hired the right people to run the company for him that he trusts and he manages that to a certain degree. He does like brand protection and promotion, but at the end of the day, he doesn't do day-to-day -day operations. I think Mr. Beast has a lot more going on and it's not his specialty. So that's not surprising, but ghost kitchens? I have problems with ghost kitchens, so I did, uh, I did Uber Eats delivery for a while, and, um, Jesus Christ, there were a couple in the area that I work with, and one of them was, like, Burger Town USA or something like that, and it was IHOP. It was IHOP. It's just a lie, and it said you have this delivery from Burger Town, whatever the name of the actual, I don't remember anymore, it was a while ago. But, like, I'm driving, and my map says it's right there on the right. I'm like, there's nothing there on the right. I have a Taco Cabana, a Buffalo Wild Wings, and an IHOP. There's no Burger Town USA here. And I did, like, two laps, and it's right on the interstate road. So, like, you have to, like, pass it. You have to do a whole loop of the interstate block to get back to where that location was. So I did that twice. And then at one of the red lights, I opened up the description and said, walk into the IHOP and ask, or Denny's, whatever it was. I don't remember anymore. It's, it's so long ago. But you're going to walk into the Denny's and ask at the front desk that you have a delivery for this company. And it's like, why the fuck? Why is it not Denny's or IHOP or whatever it was? If, 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 if the food is from that place, why is it not from that place? Why is it a different place giving food to, from this place that's called another place and it's all because of the internet and no one orders burgers from Denny's because it's IHOP and it's breakfast so no one wants the burgers there so they created a face, fake name for this burger joint but realistically it's just this breakfast joint that's giving the burgers. It's so stupid. And I know that this is the like age of the internet and food delivery problem. But ghost kitchens are stupid. It's stupid. I don't like it. I, it's just, it doesn't make sense to me. It's a problem. <laughs> because, like, I don't know, it makes these fake businesses almost. And it's really hard and confusing if you don't know what that's going on. That was the first time I ever heard of a ghost kitchen. So I didn't even know to think or to look for, like, a pancake joint when I'm going to pick up for Burger Town USA or whatever. I, f I hate it. Ghost kitchens are... I don't like that them. That was contracted by Beast to maintain the Beast Burger partnership and host uh, all these restaurants around the country. These little yeah. pop-up things. I've had Mr. Beast Burger a couple times. It's been alright each time. Like sub, sub tier 5 guys maybe level quality. But Oof. it's a fucking fact. I mean, Who cares? 5 you know, guys is a high standard. In the very beginning and since this time there has been numerous complaints regarding the food being of horrible quality. Uh, inedible in some instances. And okay. also raw. So, There's reports of just raw that's another thing, like, with the brand dissociation like that of Ghost Kitchens, it makes it infinitely harder to maintain quality control and standards because you are no longer servicing one brand. So let's say, like, Mr. Beast Burger does Ghost Kitchen IHOP in my area, but if you go over to Florida, they're using Denny's. So now you have brand inconsistencies based on the ghost kitchen inconsistencies 
it's just another problem. I think the biggest driver for fast food in America is the fact that it's consistent across the board. If I go to McDonald's, I'm not expecting the best meal I've ever had, but I know what I'm expecting no matter where I am. If I go to a Five Guys, I know as far as fast food goes, that's going to be the best burger that I've had fast food-wise. And I really like their burger and their system. So I expect that consistency at all five guys throughout the nation. Consistency is the key when it comes to the big box fast food or chain restaurants. And it's really hard to maintain that if you're using a ghost kitchen. Raw food being served by Beast Burger. More specifically, virtual dining concepts. The patty is so pink. I had to spit it out and tear it apart. It is not even cooked. Come on, Mr. Beast. Terrible name for a business, by the way. Holy crap. What fucking millennial dork came up with that shit? I mean, that's embarrassing. Brand recognition. Jimothy Beast is now that's... suing the company, though, with a terrible name for their inability to uphold standards that he, you know, requires for his name, his brand to be attached to something. Because Mr. Beast is a that's very... That's the point, right? He's, he's a very specific guy the things they do are very specific they're good quality they have a great reputation basically in every single facet of what they do including beast philanthropy that's my favorite of their uh little things they do i don't really know ventures i guess i wouldn't really call that a venture necessarily it's more it so just chocolate just now as well and... of positivity people see mr beast's name and then they associate the lack of quality with him and, and they see that as his responsibility and that's the 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 negative nature of having uh, an influencer be the name brand of a product if anything goes wrong which things go wrong that's just how business works especially food related businesses anything where that's consumable it makes people hate mr right. Beast. it makes people blame this stuff that's going wrong on him and to to an extent it is his fault for choosing this company but that's why there's a lawsuit now, guys. I mean, it's not really his fault. He hired trusted managers. Now, granted, you can make the argument that he misplaced his faith in the development of the company. But at the end of the day, like he has goals and standards that need to be met. And if that management company doesn't meet it, things like this happen where there's either lawsuits or firings or he dissolves the business. But it is like for an influencer now, Mr. Beast is fine. But for an influencer, that reputation is really hard to develop and build. So hits to that have big consequences, like obviously a massive issue for him. But I think it's something that he can walk away from fairly easily without getting tanked or destroyed in the process virtual dining concepts or as i like to call it venereal disease business is in charge of yes. ensuring the quality of the food that is going out to consumers and i cannot imagine how much heat there's been on their necks the last while because mr beast is not happy i reckon he's powerful he's got connections he's connected to jesus he's got connections to jesus i swear to god that's right of Nazareth. I, so I don't make sense. What? Right. Mr. Beast Burger came out of stretch uh, pretty much out of nowhere. I didn't see it coming. I was very impressed. Came out of the global lockdowns of 2020. Widespread panic. Nobody leaving their house. Delivery services skyrocketed. I mean, I, I think I started that's... getting food delivered at that point. Before then, I had never even experimented with it. DoorDash, Uber Eats, GubHub, etc. Those apps were responsible that's for fair. keeping billions of people alive and well fed. Billions. Not actually. Well, maybe. Yeah, that's it's it's a lot like the uh the Twitch bubble, TikTok bubble, all the all the internet like used services skyrocketed throughout COVID and that created the ghost kitchens, more ghost kitchens, more delivery. That's another one that just kind of like blew up and then like obviously it settles back down. But I think food delivery hasn't settled down as much as some of the other ones because, like, it's so convenient depending on where you live. Some areas, like, once you get used to just, like, oh, I'll order it and have it. I don't have to stop somewhere on my way home from work or I don't have to do this or that. Like, there's a lot of convenience in food delivery. So, like, COVID may have spiked it, but now it made people way more comfortable with that option 
which gives a lot easier environment for ghost kitchens to exist. You know, like them or love them, they're they're here now, right? Maybe I don't fucking know. And during this time, there was a rise of a new business model. Ghost kitchens. They popped up everywhere. Chili's has Hate their em. own ghost kitchen, by the way. It's they called do. Wingstop? <laughs> it's not Wingstop. It's something like that. It's just fucking Chili's wings. I don't know. It's lame. It's a weird concept. I kind of get Wing it, Street. but at the same time, it's like... What the fuck? Seems kind of weird. Not one to miss out on a piece of opportunity and, you know, uh, capitalizing in on business trends. Mr. Beast decided to hop on the ghost kitchen train at the end of 2020 and he birthed this new baby beast burger. Would you stop freaking out? Lay down. Get in your box. Get in your I mean, let's not pretend eat. like Frank, this company also... I made minestrone this morning. I'm thinking about adding meat to it. So what exactly... Well, uh, this company also has the distinct disadvantage of not being able to grow organically or slowly in a, or in a controlled manner because day one, Mr. B says, I'm opening a burger shop. Everyone wants it. So like, it's very hard to have slow, natural, organic growth that you can control your quality control process through when someone like Mr. Beast does something and everyone knows about it instantly overnight because of the spread and influence. This is a case where I think the influencer opening it almost works against the business growing in a healthy way. Exactly is Mr. Beast Burger. Well, it's a burger place, but there's a little more to it. It's a little bit different. Mainly, I wonder it's what incredible they run the marketing. ghost kitchen. Out all right, Mr. Beast Burger has collaborated with all the the people of the Beast brand. There's a Beast Style Burger, Chandler Style Burger, Chris Style Burgers, and Carl's Deluxe Burgers. Now, uh -huh. that's baller as fuck. By the way, this one's my favorite, and my second favorite is Beast Style. I cannot imagine if he ate this how much he'd shit. <laughs> I think he has stomach problems. I really don't know. But yeah, the, the marketing for this company <laughs> is ridiculous. It's very, very, very impressive. And then the idea that Again. they have a product is sort of a gray area Overnight, because it's a right? ghost kitchen. There's no, there's standards for sure, and there's specific products that are being made with like specific ingredients. But at the same time, you have all these different random kitchens that are making it that it's it's weird the main business model for this company is the marketing the second is the weakest point that is the fucking goats ghost kitchens theoretically this whole idea would be it's absolutely the help worst out point even some smaller restaurants in in smaller towns uh that don't get as much service as long as they can uphold the quality of the the burgers obviously it might give them some more uh, recognition because they're now associated with this massive brand mr beat jimothy beastry and obviously it goes without mentioning, I believe, the ghost kitchens get a cut of the sales, the online well, orders. Obviously, I mean, they I get a like sale. That. I should, don't even a cut, fucking say that. Of course, they're getting paid for it. And over time, this Beast Burger thing. <laughs> no, it's all for free. It's all for free. But the problem is, again, it comes down to with the ghost kitchens, at least like Chili's Ghost Kitchen is always Chili's. And, you know, that stupid Burger Town, whatever it was, is always. Denny's or I up I don't remember but like with the Mr. Beast Burger how are they doing it because in a way it's almost like a mystery box delivery system where I order a double bacon cheeseburger for delivery and I don't know if I'm gonna get a Whataburger a Wendy's or a McDonald's those are very different, three very different flavors, different types of patties, and different, like, delivery systems. And that's the problem with the Ghost Kitchen model, is if you don't have a consistent brand, bigger brand, that's pushing it, then you're going to have inconsistencies in your local areas. And if one area is failing, it ruins the reputation of the entire brand so let's say the mr beast burger in new york city is absolutely amazing because of the ghost kitchen they use but the mr beast burger in austin texas is always a bad product those people in new york are gonna hear that these it's it's always bad and it's gonna spread throughout the kind of ecosystem of that kitchen being asked does the ghost kitchen model not use different stock to that of the original restaurant? And I don't know if that's the case exactly, but 
even then it could be a problem depending on you know distribution or how close they are to distribution centers and on top of that if like let's say i run a mr beast burger out of a denny's denny's has this type of meat that they cook like this flip it cook like that and they have a set standard and procedure for cooking their burger if they're not using the exact same stock of food supply for the mr beast burger as their burger is the cooking process different as well and are they being trained on that cooking process uh, I think if they don't use the same stock that the restaurant already uses in house, it creates more training difficulty because there's no necessary indication that the kitchen staff can easily switch between the two different styles fluidly with, you know, training and everything. It's possible. But when you're talking about a ghost kitchen, is there a Mr. Beast? burger trainer going to all these locations to train the exact process for meeting their market demand so not using what the kitchen already uses is kind of a problem with situations where like again chili's has wing street chili's already makes that it's already on their menu it's something they are already doing they just have that menu online for that online specific ghost kitchen. So there's nothing changing within it. And you know that every Chili's already does it. So they can still get the consistency because the larger brand owns the sub brand. Mr. Beast Burger's kind of different. They provide a recipe. So it says that anyone can apply to be a Mr. Beast location. They ask you the equipment list. They provide the recipe. If they're only providing the recipe and not the actual materials, there's where a lot of your inconsistency is going to come from. And it's a big problem for a nationwide brand. Blue up, dude. Everywhere. Look at this fucking crazy map. It makes me tired looking at it. Oh, <laughs> God. That's so many circles and dots and triangles and shapes and stuff so the vision of the brand is clear what they do or what they're supposed to do is clear you guys understand it's a very simple concept now what the fuck is virtual dining concepts <sighs> god dude eddie burback made a really great video on ghost kitchens now what is a ghost kitchen well the definition it's garbage can be a little bit broad and too general because the business model is garbage. very new and ghost kitchens come in a few different forms virtual dining concepts is sort of like a shadow network of the food industry. They're basically the Illuminati of fast fucking food, okay? It's the new world order. It's the Federal Reserve. And instead of ushering in dependence on fiat currencies, they're ushering in dependence on food, obesity, and high blood pressure. Ah! And sugar as well, not to mention sugar. It's just food. It's pretty efficient. It's not a dependency on fit. Like at the end of the day, all that aside, People want to eat trash 24-7. They can eat trash 24-7. If they want to take the risk of all those diseases, that's on them. And you shouldn't be shamed for that. And companies shouldn't be shamed for, for providing a service that people can or cannot willingly participate in. Granted, there's healthier ways to do it. And, like, I think people should be more cognizant of it. But, like... I'm far from a saint when it comes to eating healthy. <laughs> business model. Would you be quiet? That is working right now. So virtual dining concepts, basic business model is to partner with creators who want to build some kind of food brand. And then they help them through every single step of the process from the inception of the idea. Skag burgers. Putting the food into the hands Skag of burger coming soon. Give it a year and I would be on like Gordon Ramsay's kitchen nightmares. Just like instantly. Open up day one success, second month in, no one's coming back. I don't know what's wrong. Gordon Ramsay comes. This is the worst food I've ever tasted. What's wrong with you? I don't know. I don't make food. You're not even a cook? No. I'm sorry, Mr. Ramsay. I just had an idea and I ran with it. What's your experience? Oh, I have none. I worked at a Sonic for a little while and like I did work at a Mexican joint when I was in like high school, but um, that's it. <laughs> 
This is the worst idea I've ever heard. You should be out of business. I don't think I can save you. But but I have a positive attitude, Mr. Ramsey. Please help. <laughs> Interesting. They even have this cool little thing on their website. Create your vision. Work with us to create menu. Market it's not. demand. Make Promise. money. It's that simple? Oh my God. Back to Eddie Burback's video for a moment, by the way. He did a, a great job explaining sort of the ways that these businesses operate and even talks about them having sometimes 20 restaurants so I can in think one of two. ghost kitchen. Or oh, I guess yeah. restaurants well. in a ghost kitchen. So like 20 different things that are potentially made in one kitchen. There are 44 restaurants on Uber Eats that yeah. all share this one address. How do you manage that menu and consistency? And you Wait. have... Food places they all have to be related, completely right? Completely different cultures and food types. With a bunch of overlapping menu items what? that are the exact same, even if you order from different kitchens. It's it's very strange. It's like the Chili's thing. This That's is actually discovered by my girlfriend Chrissy. She started like looking manage. at individual menus in this one location and finding that some of the items looked really similar. The biggest, most glaring slap in the face to me was when I figured out that fucking wing place is, chi is Chili's. It's just Chili's. I went in there and talked to the people at Chili's. I was like, hey, you know, I was just fucking eating pills off the floor of the bathroom, and I come out here and I find, I, I find out that this is the same thing as the fucking wings I've been ordering. What the fuck? So, uh, VDC, yeah, I knew about Venereal that. Disease <laughs> Central, partnered with Beast to do this exact thing to, to create a ghost kitchen, make all the stuff Makes badass. Sense. It's weird. You can just sign up for a restaurant looking to act as a ghost kitchen, or you can sign up to create your restaurant for the good. It's, I didn't really realize how ubiquitous this was. Um, and maybe it's not really, but, uh, it's, it's more common than I thought. The only two I've ever heard of are the one from fucking Chili's, which I don't know what it's called. It's just wings. That's what it's called. Lame. Now we get to the obvious meat of the uh, situation here. <laughs> It's because it's about meat. The partnership is not working. It's so bad that Mr. Beast has filed a lawsuit because there's a fucking terrible reviews for the product. It's I've heard pretty much nothing positive about it. I mean, there's even instances of the food, like I mentioned, being raw. That is insane. That is just a raw burger patty, although it does look kind of delicious. Oh, God. the the Yeah, like there's no one. It doesn't appear like there's anyone that are spot checking or setting up these kitchens for success. I think that's the problem is if you're going to ghost kitchen like Mr. Beast is doing, I think you have to have a setup, startup and training team. And that training team needs to be able to go through the process and at the end of the process, say, no, you failed to meet our standards or you have been taught on the system and you meet the brand's perceived or desired outcome. Because and like the one that has like 40 restaurants op operating out of one kitchen, there is no way that any of them have any sort of like development of their menu to a degree because like I watch a lot of Gordon Ramsay's kitchen nightmares and the first thing that Gordon almost always points out in all of these like disasters terrible food restaurants is the menu is too big so if you push a kitchen to learn too many menu items the quality inherently drops because you cannot deliver a good, consistent product if there is too much to know about each product. So, like, if Mr. Beast wanted to turn this around and keep it in a ghost kitchen, he would have to go to locations, give them training, and verify that they meet the standards before accepting them out for delivery. And... I don't know that that's what they're looking to do. I think Mr. Beast play in this because of where it's headed is probably going to end up being walking away from Mr. Beast Burger because they cannot deliver a nationwide consistent product. It's going the, to be the, the big one. hurdle, oh my Lord, right? That's like enough to kill a man. On top of this, a bunch of bad reviews. It's just that was bad disgusting. The bad news came piling in. Mr. Beast did not like it. 
He did not like it at all. My seven months pregnant daughter ate a beast burger October 29th. October 30th, she woke up throwing up all day. By that evening, she went to the hospital in premature labor. Several days later, the baby was burned seven weeks early. No lie. What? Food poisoning. Watch what the hell you are serving people to eat. Okay, that is Jesus. insane. Mr. Beast Burger is responsible according to- On the scale of like worst possible outcomes. That one is up there. Mr. Beast Burger was so bad it caused premature birth. And threatened the life of a new- Holy shit. Okay, obviously this is a one-off. This is a one-off. Um, I don't think most people would expect that result. I think there's some, you know, better experiences of the restaurant than that uh, are probably more common. Cindy S. from Fenton, Missouri, for a premature baby. That's crazy. And then we got someone mentioning That's his insane. son's favorite YouTuber's restaurant. My son <laughs> wanted to eat at one of his favorite YouTuber's restaurants. That should have been my warning. But lesson learn never again. It's a good never again. The food is actually made at an upscale Italian restaurant called Brio, which I also would not try because if you can't get See? a cheeseburger right, I'm not going to trust your Italian. The burger was charred dry. Hockey puck. Like, okay, this one's being run out of an Italian kitchen. Like, what what business do they have run running burgers, right? Like, talk about. It's just a lot of crossover and like maybe it's easy money for them or like low hanging fruit or whatever, but like they're not set up for that menu, right? Go to fart cry for the greasy smash burger promised by the menu. I love smash burgers. Also very easy smash to fucking burgers make. I don't good. know why it's so hard. I didn't trust him to get it right or be any quicker if I went back and complained. Remember, ghost kitchen, you don't need that. Shoo, what a way to celebrate the 20th anniversary of 9-11. So, I mean, know, they're sorry about my voice insanely changing about 15 to common that, now. I, I'm not a very good thespian. So virtual dining Most of your, like, big chains probably have ghost kitchens as well. the hands of a million customers more, maybe. I really don't even know. A lot of people, though. But it wasn't being consumed and enjoyed it's up insane. to the level of Mr. Beast standards. He said on Twitter, Yeah, it's impossible to guarantee the quality of orders with virtual restaurants. Hurts my soul to see orders messed up. Sadly, I can't get out of my deal with BB. Hence why oh. I'm never giving up control of feastable so i can always do what's best for my fans harsh lesson to learn exactly dude that's why i fucking fucked you up can't got, get out of the contract the candy company man because i want to be able to do it myself love mr beast mr beast unlike me is suing a motherfucker vdc and the impact of the negativity surrounding all the beast burger stuff that's been the catalyst for the decision as a final i'm end, surprised he got himself into a contract that doesn't know, have like conclusion performance metrics that let him out or whatever mr beast insanely successful um i imagine he has a good team that works with him for like legal stuff surprised he couldn't find or develop a contract that doesn't have some sort of performance metric failures or fail points that allow him to drop the deal beast doesn't like the quality of beast burger because of vdc he can't get out of his contract, so he's suing the fuck out of him. He's also not making any money from it, apparently, which is unbelievable to me. He ain't even getting any bags, and he's getting all the backlash? What the fuck? And oh yeah, dude, Mr. Beast Burger, they privated their fucking Twitter the, account. The lawsuit's Guilty. gonna be super oh, no. interesting. I would say personally, if you're going to go get a food from a ghost kitchen or whatever, just go to the restaurant. In my case, I'll just go to Chili's instead of to fucking Wings to go or whatever the fuck. There's no Mr. Beast Burger where I live because I live in the middle of nowhere. And quite honestly, I'm grateful. I also recommend watching Eddie's video on That's Ghost Kitchens. That's 100% true, though. It like, into great detail, and it's extremely interesting and good Don't quality. use Ghost He's Kitchens. Beautiful, beautiful fucking mustache. There's no... Oh, there's no consistency. There's no way to, like, maintain it. I... I, I don't know what to tell you. It's a bad deal. There's the link. Make sure you guys give that video a like. Uh, that one's Oompa TV instead of Oompaville. Same guy. Oh, it is. We've watched him before. It's a pretty entertaining guy. He, he definitely brings an energy to it. And I think as far as this topic goes, ghost kitchens are trash. They need to go away. Um, They just confuse the brand. They don't deliver i almost feel like some of them are used as like a scapegoat so that like a company that doesn't specialize in a food type can sell that food type 
without people knowing it's from this brand. But then if it doesn't do well or perform well, they can get rid of it and not take the backlash of delivering bad burgers or whatever. See, so that's the thing in this case. Mr. Beast Burger is getting all the flack for all of these because in the larger sense, it is their brand that it's going through. But all these small, like that Italian restaurant or wherever else it's run out of, they're not catching the heat for delivering this bad food. It almost gives them an umbrella to sell bad food without getting any backlash if it falls flat. It helps customers who boycott some restaurants too. Oh, yeah, the, there's that too where like they can almost sneakily get people to buy their food even though they're being boycotted for whatever reason that's a possibility like there's so many negatives to the whole like ghost kitchen idea i think that if they continue to exist it should be clear very clear in the ordering process that i am ordering mr beast burger made by insert restaurant right there there should be some standard of online care that if you're ordering from a ghost kitchen it should tell you what ghost kitchen company that's coming out of oh there's a ton of shady stuff in hospitality but i think this is like it's another step that just furthers it i i, I don't like i don't like it ryan it really like deteriorates the accountability in the system for like bad food and it puts blame where it doesn't actually belong i guess that's all i gotta say about it is if you know or find out that something's a ghost kitchen don't use it go to the original place if enough of us get on this anti-ghost kitchen train we can kill the ghost kitchen industry it's not gonna be easy but it's what's right. <laughs> and subscribe. Do this stuff. You want all that? All of that. Hey there, it's Skeg Froggy. Thanks for watching the video. And if you enjoyed it, please let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and follow me here on Twitch for more awesome content. Link is in the description.